One of my favorite places to go to do astrophotography is the John Glenn Astronomy Park up in Hocking Hills, Ohio. It's so beautiful here, the sun's setting in. I'm about to image the Seagull Nebula. So you see we have some fellowship there, talk about the night sky together. I love John Glenn Astronomy Park. We even have power in the middle there on that island. They call it the Jupiter Island. Now here we're setting up and I'm gonna be imaging, me and another guy, Greg, are gonna be imaging the Seagull Nebula. We had discussions about Hubble, so I'm going to do a part two of this where I'm gonna turn this image into the Hubble palette. So be sure to keep checking for part two I'm not sure when I'll get it done, but I will get there. Here we go, into processing. Okay, so you wanna open your web browser, you wanna download ASI Studio. ASI Studio will run on the Mac OS, it'll run on PC as well. Of course, on the Mac OS, there, you can't run Deep Sky Stacker. ASI Studio allows you to stack images much faster than PixInsight. It also uses much less resources than PixInsight. So if you have a pretty good image that's right out of the gate, then it's a good idea to uh, run ASI Studio. It doesn't have all the controls that Deep Sky Stacker does, but you're gonna see it will produce a great image, nevertheless, if you've had a, a good imaging session. So let's download that and open it. And when, um, when you drag it over, you want to make sure that you hit replace. You want to drag both icons over and it will install. And then we'll begin to stack our images. Um, of course, you have bias, flats, darks, and lights. So we'll start with the bias, go to the flats, go to the darks, go to the lights, and put all those ready to be stacked. Okay, what's really cool here is you can kind of do sort of like a blink, a really quick blink on here. Sometimes it takes a minute for the image to preview. You can go through and you can adjust the brightness, the contrast, and things like that of the images. Uh, before stacking, uh, you can go through the frames, you can uh, pick out things that are in your image that you don't necessarily want. Like for instance, I imaged this Seagull Nebula until it went into the tree line so I can delete that frame. And it's just as simple as that. And then all you have to do after that is just stack your images. So let's do that. Here we go. Stack. And this, like I said, this will run about five minutes or so. So we'll come back after it's done. Oh, wow. That was quick, huh? Yeah, I sped it up so you didn't have to sit through the the entire process but there you see it seagull nebula is up now and you can see a little histogram there at the bottom you can adjust the brightness you can adjust the contrast and you can do all of this before you save it so i'll save this and then open it up into pixinsight and begin processing So now we have PixInsight open, and we're going to open the file here. It's going to be found under Documents, and there's the ASI folder. Now inside this folder, you'll notice that there are three files. There's going to be a FIT, there's going to be a JPEG, and a TIFF. We're going to, for PixInsight, we're going to open the TIFF file. Of course, you know FIT um, is nonlinear. It will open, but you're going to have problems with color calibration and such. So let's open that, and we have the unstretched image. So the first thing I'm going to do is is run the screen transfer function which is found under processes all processes scroll all the way down to the bottom and find screen transfer function now this is going to give it a stretch uh, sometimes it overstretches it so don't worry if it's all blown out we'll go back and fix that okay so that opened up this box and of course we hit the nuke icon to make it large and then you have this little arrow up here and you click on that 
and you can click on the plus and minus buttons there to um, adjust how far it stretched because it overstretches as you can see here it's way overstretched so we can adjust these sliders and then after I get those sliders I'm going to drag this off and create a process control icon then I'll take that icon because it just says process so I'm going to rename it okay for now that's I'm just gonna leave that I'll come back and do it in a minute but I'm going to go ahead and go to processes and then I'm going to go to dynamic background extraction and this is where we're going to get rid of all that red and stuff that the filter has caught so open that so I'm going to adjust this here I'm going to adjust tolerance to two and the other to six I'm going to go to sample generation I don't like the size of those so I'm going to increase them greatly and it all varies from image to image Okay, so now uh, you can see the stars. Uh, some of them are on stars. I don't think that really matters that much. Some people will spend all day dragging them off bright stars, deleting them, uh, doing these things. The only place I think that they need to be removed from that I've ever seen a difference is when they're on the nebula itself. If the star is extremely bright, I will remove it. But other than that, I will keep it. And to remove it, you just hit this red X that's up here at the top, and that will remove that square. You can drag the square to another area and try not to cover the brightest stars in the image. And there we go. So I'll drag, I'll take in this little tricon icon there in the bottom corner and I will drag this off and create a, another process control icon. And I do that just in case there's something in there that I need to go back and fix later on. Uh, then I don't have to set up and, and move my little boxes everywhere again and, and the go through that whole process so I can you know go back and increase or decrease tolerance if I want to and, and see if that makes a difference it's a lot of playing around with and there are no two images that are alike so it's, it's hard to build a straight process control for every single one of them so now the same triangle I misspoke before triangle uh, that I used before not trapezoid move it over and drag it to the image and it'll go ahead and apply background um, extraction then you have your background extracted you have your background image uh, I like to create them both I, I, I like to have that because so, I like to go back and look at it I like to see what it extracted exactly and of course I already have my stretch process control icon that I made earlier uh, so I can go back and restretch that and then I'll take that later and uh, continue to make adjustments while it is unstretched so that when I do stretch it for the final time uh, what I see is what I get what you see is what you get and that's what I like to do so here we go so now to process geometry dynamic crop so I'm going to go ahead and crop this I do this later in the game some people don't do it so late in the game I like to do it late in the game because I like to have as much as of my image as possible there uh, it makes it odd when you go to print uh, sometimes you have to crop it anyway when you go to the print shop and it's just a mess so I will zoom in very close on this image and you see that long slant there at the bottom it's it stacked kind of funny I think that's the ASI uh, stack program that does that uh, deep sky doesn't but it's using as much of the image as it possibly can it's not cropping for you it is you know on the alignment and uh, neither does the deep sky but um, it's it's going to merge all these together very quickly so it doesn't doesn't necessarily do as great of a job but anyway I'm gonna go around these edges real slow and very zoomed in and just make slight adjustments as I go uh, to ensure I have the full image now notice here I have not yet um, stretched the image and I like to do star exterminator by RC Astro before I stretch the image and there uh, you can find it under processes there's two places you can find it actually I like that he puts it right underneath the process icon in object recognition you can look in object recognition 
where you can go to processes, all processes, and then run start exterminator. So I'm going to run that now and separate it before it stretch, and that'll take just a few minutes. Okay, so now we have our starless image. So what I'm going to do, I like to work with more than one starless image in case I mess up. So I'm going to drag this off here and create another one. And there I have a backup copy just in case I mess something up. I'm going to rename this uh, Star Clone. Of course, you, know, you can't be like me and mess up, but you got to remember when you separate words, you have to use underscores and picks in sight. Sometimes I'll, I'll do that by mistake, but there we go. We have now two images of just stars. All right, so I'm going to mess with the star field for a little bit. I'm going to show you the difference here. If I drag this over here and I do an auto stretch now to just the star field and I, I hit the uh, nuke icon up here, it looks absolutely crazy. It's way blown out. Um, wow, that would be a lot of editing to try to correct that. So instead, I'm going to use that process icon I had. I adjusted it and create a new process icon. So I'm going to drag that over onto the star field, and it's going to match the background uh, that I had already stretched. It, it's funny how it works like that, but, but it always seems to be nearly perfect when I do it this way. So there, um, just with that, the star field is pretty much done once I uh, uh, put it over to the histogram and make it permanent. So now I'm going to do pretty much the same thing with the background. I'm going to drag that over. I'm going to put it back to where you can see it. And I'm going to drag it over. I'm going to apply that auto stretch that I already made the process control icon from. And now the background is pretty much done. There's a, a lot of tweaking things we're going to do to it still, but, but you can get a very good preview of what it will look like. So it's time to go to work with histograms. So that's process um, intensity transformations histogram. And I'm going to go ahead and just drag this over here on the desk, on the workspace rather to create a process control icon because I'm going to be working with it um, pretty much here. Now, before I do that, I'm going to go to processes, noise reduction, and then uh, I'm going to go into noise exterminator, another RC Astro tool even before I make this uh, image stretched. Now I'm going to open the little histogram icon. I'm going to open up the STF thing that I made. I'm going to drag the triangle down. And don't sweat if it turns bright white like this. It's not a big deal. Um, that's just because you're in the image preview. Now we have our image out of linear form and it is now stretched. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go ahead and run noise exterminator once again. I see a little bit of noise in some areas here uh, looking up close so it won't hurt to run it again. And we're going to take out even more in its stretched form. Alright, I think that looks a little bit better. Very, very slight difference. It's probably not even noticeable. But I'm going to go to processes now. All processes. And I'm going to go hunt for background neutralization. Now, when I do a background neutralization, it has to be built off of another image. So, it has to be an image that is of the background so I'm going to do a preview in a very dark area of my image and that will be the image that I use is the preview screen I just have to select it here in 
and a background neutralization. So here we go. So now we just have to go over here. Uh, there's the preview, it's pretty dark. We go to this icon here to select the image. And we scroll down there and we find the preview that we have just created. Make sure it's in there, preview, load it, and then we apply the background neutralization. And it's, it's just as easy as that. Screen, look at various things, uh, checking some structures out, seeing how they look, if they came through good. And it doesn't look too bad, but I am noticing there are some channels that could be a little darker. So I'm going to use something called uh, uh, Dark Structure Enhance, and we find that up under the Scripts button. So just go up and click on Scripts. Look for Dark Structure Enhance under the Utilities and then bring that up. You can play around with these levels or you can extract a mask, which is what I like to do. That way I can go back in and adjust the histogram, apply the mask and adjust the histogram. So you, now you have your mask and you can uh, just drag that off there and save it for later. I'm gonna rename it to DC Mask. That way I know what it is, or DS Mask, Dark Structure Mask. <laughs> I don't know why. <laughs> DC, well, that'll work. I'll still know what it is, but anyway, here we go. Okay, so now I'm going to go into processes. I'm going to go to down here to intensity transformations, and we'll work on the curves. And like I said, there's no set thing. This is all to taste, and of course I like to uh, pull off my curves sometimes uh, when I make the first one. That way I can go back to it if I decide to go back and later process this image again and try to do something a little different. So I'm just going to stretch this, uh, I'm stretch the saturation, move it around to what I think looks good, and I'm also going to work on the luminance just a little bit. I'm probably going to turn this thing into a uh, Hubble Pilot at some point. I don't know if I can give a tutorial on that, but uh, anyway. So we're going to apply these curves, and we're just about, this one's just about in the books. Yeah, you've seen I've done a lot of different curving. On this one particular one, I've, I've um, messed with saturation. I've messed with the luminance and also adjusted the red channel. So I'm just applying that now and let it run. I'm going to go into um, processes. Then I'm going to go down to multi scale processing. Then I'm going to go into HDR uh, transformation. And it's another thing that's in the eye of the beholder. You can go here and you can adjust these layers that it's going to transform uh, up or down. You can always go back and hit the undo button and just play around with those and see uh, what looks best. Sometimes the, the change is just so hard to see that you don't know what it's doing. But trust me, it, all the little minor differences you make really make major differences in the final image. So... You just kind of learn to watch for certain things. You can notice it a little bit there when I go up there to the top and I hit the undo button and then redo, undo, redo. I just kind of look back and forth and see if that looks all right. And that's the that's the difference. It's hard for me to explain. It's just a little bit of a deeper, deeper look to it. There's more structure that's coming out from this tool. It's very hard to see. so that's probably enough playing with that um, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go up here to processes and scroll down 
to noise reduction, I'm going to go to A, C, D, and R. Now this one you want to, of course, click over here on the lightness mask and you want to do the preview and you've got to kind of drag it to where it's just kind of just barely looks a little bit smoky on the preview and it's something else again you can adjust the levels you can adjust the um, how, how sharp it gets there's all kinds of different things you can do uh, it's just very subjective one thing you might want to pay attention to is before you apply it is to unclick the preview box which I failed to do there but that there's another um, process that has been ran So for this session on just the background right now, that is processed. I'm going to save it off now. Make sure that uh, you go to File, Save As. Make sure that you save it as a 16-bit integer, um, not a 32, before you transfer it to another program, which I'm about to do now. I'm going to take this over into Topaz uh, Gigapixel and it's just going to remove some of the noise and things like that before I combine it and before I'm finished with this thing I'm going to take it back over to Topaz Gigapixel once again and I'm going to increase it and the reason I increase the size of it I'm going to go probably like four times and that's just so I can post it on Facebook because uh, Facebook image compression is absolutely treacherous it's horrible make sure images look bad so anyway, here we go. I'm looking at this, looking at this up. Sorry, I got a notification. Okay, so I'm looking at this in Topaz. Now I'm looking at it at 4x, uh, just to see what kind of noise it's going to be able to take out there on the auto settings. A lot of times I'll click those auto settings off and just kind of adjust it because it looks too, um, just too sticky, I guess, or too pixelized. Even though it's supposed to be denoising, it makes it the uh, gradients and things just gone, uh, which you don't want with deep space imaging. So I'm going to take this down to one. I'm going to save it because I still have the star field to apply. So this is just going to run a little bit of denoising on it. So we'll do that, and then we're going to probably take this image over into Photoshop next, or I'll come back and work on the star field. Uh, let this thing run and I'll make up my mind make up my mind for me okay so I've made up my mind I went ahead and brought it over into PixInsight just look at it in PixInsight after it was increased but I'm going to work on the star field I'm going to run denoise on it I'm going to run an RC Astro um, noise exterminator on the star field and continue working from there because I still have to save off the star field in order to bring it over into Photoshop once it's done. I also have to um, have to restretch the star field. I probably I'll move out of the sunlight here. I have to restretch the star field because the star field is still the star field is still in in linear mode. So I forgot about that. But at least I saved my uh, auto stretch process up here, so it shouldn't be a problem to get it where it needs to be. I thought I did that already. I usually try to do that in the beginning, but for some reason, probably just thinking about making an instructional video, I forgot to put in those instructions. So, yeah. Anyway, let's go ahead and apply the STF Auto Stretch, which I already created the process icon for. Go ahead and apply it to the histogram, and somehow I deleted my histogram icon in the process as well so I had to go back up to processes intensity transformations and histogram transformation here we go yeah I'm seeing a lot of red in that so I'm gonna go up here to processes uh, noise reduction and I'm going to go to SCNR and I'm going to change this over to the red channel and we'll on green and we'll take down the red channel just a little bit here
Okay, it looks pretty good, but I've still got a halo around here, so I'm going to go and invert the image now. And I go up here and invert it, and I'm going to take, and the halo becomes green, so I'm going to run green SCNR to get rid of some of these halos. You know, sometimes you got to run it. Sometimes you have to run it more than once. Sometimes you have to run it twice. Sometimes three times. But it's better to go too little than too much. So you can adjust the sliders and have less taken out, and then just hit it four times if you want 100%. You know, make it 33%. So there you have it, and that's looking better. So that's good enough to save. So file save as. Remember, I'm going to rename it. Remember to make it a 16-bit file, of course, when you're saving here. Make sure it's clicked. Click OK. Save it. Now I'm going to open it up over in, when this is done, I'll open it up over in Photoshop. Close that. Start Photoshop. And then loads. There we go. So I'm going to open it here get to the right directory that would help Astro CB wouldn't it okay Seagull on recents so that's convenient so now I'll open my stars and I'm also going to open the the background image that I increased which was the Seagull up and I'll open my star image bring those both in there together and here's where I'm about to do a whole bunch more audits there's the stars there's the Seagull Star Seagull look pretty good together already, but I'm going to work on Seagull first in camera raw mode. First, I'm going to work on the haze and see what I can do there. I like camera raw mode because it has the sliders that you can instantly see what's going on. You can just kind of play with each of these sliders and find a good balance in there that you like. And then once that's done, you'll be able to you'll be able to drop it uh, to hit OK, and then you'll have camera roll mode. You can either uh, put it in there as a layer, or you can just duplicate your image. Me, I don't like working with layers because I'm not very good at it. So most of the time, I'll just duplicate the image and then come back and make more adjustments in camera roll mode. Here I'm looking at the head here to see about the detail so I'm going to increase increase the texture which is going to increase details I crank it way up and I'm gonna also look at the clarity now you'll watch the clarity because with the clarity a lot of times you'll introduce more noise so that looks pretty good check that with the dehazing up close See if I can find something I like. There we go. So I'll just keep playing around with these sliders for a little while. And then I'm going to come back and I'm going to work on the stars as well. I'll probably take, I might even take this back over into Pixen site once again. Uh, we'll just have to see. So now I'm going to go into RC Astro Star Shrink. I like to use Star Shrink before I apply the image, before I merge the two images together, because when you use Star Shrink, when it's merged with the image, a lot of times it will distort the image as well. Not only will it distort the stars, but it will distort the nebula. 
So we're going to do that first. Okay, so Star Shrink did a pretty good job. Now back to the background image, we're going to apply the star image. And here, of course, I'll drag this over so I can see. Uh, you're going to want to select the proper image at the top there, scroll down to stars. And right now to multiply, we don't want that. We want something like linear dodge or lighten or screening. Uh, somewhere in those icons that are, are there, right there in that set. We want to choose one of those. So we'll choose that. So I like linear dodge, it's a little strong, but you can go in here and you can adjust the percentage. You can bring it down to various percentages. And of course you have the preview. You can look and see what it's gonna look like there on the screen. And you can just keep tooling around with whatever percent of the stars you want to re-add back into the image. You can really spend a lot of time on this also. So once you get it there, the way you want it, just click OK and it will apply the image. So kind of panning around the image here, I've decided after looking at them, I'm gonna go ahead and run RC Astro Star Shrink again under filters, RC Astro. Now I can adjust it and back it off so it's not distorting the image. Uh, you can reduce the sharpness. There's various things you can do here on the sliders in order to take care of that and make sure it's not going to affect the shape of the nebula itself. So we'll find a position that we like and we'll just apply that. Okay, that was a little bit too aggressive, I think, but that's not a problem. I can simply go up here to edit and I can uh, scroll down in here and reduce the star shrink from there. I can fade it. I can just make a little adjustment over here on the fader and just take it down just a little bit or a lot or wherever I want to go with it. So I'm able to control it there even after it's already applied instead of having to completely undo it. I can preview and unpreview and just have a look at it. Okay so now that that's done I can take the entire thing back into camera roll. I go up here to filters and choose camera roll and while in camera roll I can make additional adjustments with the star field. Uh, sometimes things don't adjust the same without the stars in the image. I'm not sure of the reason but it's always good to go back in and try to tweak some settings. Okay, so we can see that made a difference. We'll go up here and go to edit and undo it to look at it. And then we'll go to redo it. Looks pretty good. There's some shadows there that I think could look a little bit better. So I'm going to go ahead and save this now. And I'll just rename this file. In case I want to go back a step, I can do that and I'll probably delete most of those other files when I'm done so I'm not going to change any of that say okay so that's saved so I'm going to go back in and open PixInsight and I'm going to bring this image back into PixInsight now there it is combine.tiff and remember I was talking about the dark structures here that uh, it's under scripts dark structure enhance I can go down to scripts I can um, get on to it or I can go over into the mask that I already made I can put that mask on there okay, let's minimize that I don't want to accidentally close it then I won't have it anymore so that's minimize I'm going to make sure I don't see the mask so I'm going to go to show mask and, and make it disappear adjust the histogram reset it there and I'll play around with it and look at those darker structures within okay so that all looks good I'll go ahead and apply that now close that out close out the preview and it's come Make it a little bigger and take a closer look at it here. Yeah, it looks good. So I can hit the undo and redo button and just kind of look and see what it did. And undo and redo. And you can see just barely the structures popping out a little bit. So I'm going to save this off now. 
save as and I'm going to save it as what's the next thing I'm going to do logo so I'll just save it as like seagull logo because I'm going to take it into Lightroom now to do my logo I know you can do it in preview as well but I, I just kind of like to do it in Lightroom make sure it's 16 bit and then click OK and we'll save it and then we'll go open Lightroom so here in Lightroom, I've got to add the photo. You can see I worked on Orion last, a few sunsets. So add photos, it's probably going to go to the sunset directory, yeah. And we're going to go back to the right directory here in the seagull. And I'm going to add the logo.tiff. There we are. Yep, yep, looks good. <laughs> Look what auto does, it just kind of runs it. And I don't like using Lightroom at all the sliders and things to edit it uh, there's a few things in here just like camera roll but it's just no good so I'm going to export this and I'm going to do this because I already have my logo in here I think my logo is a bit subdued and in the wrong place so it, I don't see it here so I have to um, yeah and I use um, copyright at Astro CB so I'm going to turn up the opacity of my logo so I can see it again and then I can adjust where the logo is on the screen. I'll we'll move it over here to the right side. And it's always a good idea in case you have to crop or framing, things like that, to move. Don't put your logo right in the corner. Um, it's probably actually too low there, but it's okay because I'm just using this one to post on Facebook. Okay, now so I'll export that. Export, I'm going to export as a TIFF file. If I go original plus settings, I will lose the logo. So I can't do that. I'm going to have to go to TIFF, and that keeps the logo. And let's rename it to something I can understand. Uh, this is going to go next into uh, Topaz AI, so I'm going to rename it so I know what, what my next step is in case I, something interrupts me and I have to come back because there's a lot of interruptions around here. Um, this video has been forever because I've had to stop and resume a few times. So we'll save it there under Seagull and export. So I'll wait on that to export and then the next thing I'll do is open Gigapixel. It's going to make it nice and big. Um, we're going to resize it. We're going to up the resolution of it because Facebook compression is such that it looks horrible. So I'm going to go through Topaz and it comes in here with these automatic settings. I like to look a lot of times down here at the logo because even though I've just done the logo and it's just a font, it is still, you, you can look at the logo and you can still see pixels that it's just pixelized, like crazy pixelized. If you really zoom in there and do your, your pixel peep at it, you know, look there, there, there's pixels around there. There's little square blocks. Uh, Topaz, see there, it'll take all of that out. There's, if I hold down and click, it's before it's applied and then releases uh, what the filter will look like or the Topaz um, Gigapixel will do. Up here, you want to be kind of careful because too much of it, get little lines like that, it almost looks like stained glass in a church or something. So I'm going to tame that down a bit. So it's just one of those other things that has sliders, it has recommended settings. A lot of times I'll turn those off and adjust the sliders uh, and I'll add some blur back in because deep space has blur. So we want to keep some of that. Obviously, uh, we're not using Hubble telescopes to shoot, although, you know, I, w I wish we were, but we're not. And we can get some of those, some of those jagged lines out of it. Just as uh, we had earlier when I was doing this on a smaller factor before I combined the stars. Now if the stars are in, uh, it can make them even rounder, which is also really good for prints. If you're trying to print it off, you can see I'm turning on and off the filter there. I've decided to go to standard because it's less jagged. So I'm going to play around with these settings for a little bit. I'm going to turn off the gamma and work on some of the sliders and then I will export it probably four times for Facebook. Okay, so that's all done. Now I'm going to go down here and I'm going to click on Save Image. Now here I want to go up here to Image Format. 
because right now it's just set to the original. So I'm going to change it over to a JPEG. I'm going to change the name so I know what it is. It's going to just have to type for Facebook because it already had Seagull in there or something like that. And I just hit save and this process takes a few minutes so I'll just speed this up real quick. Okay, so as soon as this gets done processing, it's ready for posting online because it'll be higher resolution so you won't be subject to that. I'm just opening Finder and searching for it now. Let's see go to Facebook. For some reason, when I'm in here, I cannot export it directly from the Mac. So I'm going to then airdrop it to myself. So I hit that little share icon that's up here at the top and it gives me an option to airdrop. And I'll wait, I've got to unlock my phone. So there it is. And I'll just click on myself and hit export. Now next part of the video, I'm going to come in, which is my daughter's phone, I'm gonna come in and I'm going to do Hubble palette on the same image. But I'm gonna end this for now, because this has ran very long. So I hope it was helpful. Until next time.